Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel in my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a bullet chart in Power BI using native visuals. A bullet chart is basically used when you want to compare two different data points. Let's say for example, you want to compare your actual sales versus forecast value or you want to compare year over year sales or you want to compare month over month, etc. When you have two different data points, the bullet chart can be used to present that particular data set. And it's easier for the end users to understand the story that you are trying to tell them. Now, let me quickly help you understand how to read this particular chart. Now, the colored bars that you see here, the red and the green ones, those are your actual sales that have happened in the region West, South, East and Central. And these black markers that you see here, these are basically your target values for that particular region. And this is basically saying that the West region has achieved 80% of the targets. It has not currently met the targets yet. Whereas the East region here has met the targets and it has overshot by about 20%. So this is basically what the chart is telling you. Now I'm going to show you how to recreate this visual in Power BI. So let's get started. Let me start off with a new page here and start by adding in the visual. I'm going to use the clustered bar chart to create this particular visual and I'm going to bring in the region here and I have a measure created here called total sales. This is basically some of my sales amount column that I have in my data set. And then I have a measure created here called target. These are basically my target values. And these are basically the hard coded values that I have created for the sake of this tutorial. You might have the actual ones which you might want to use. And once you have your target measure created, let's head over to the format tab and let's go to the error bars section. Let's enable error bars here and choose by field. And then let's add the upper bound here and I have my target created. So I'm going to go to my sales table here. I'm going to choose the target measure as my upper bound. For the lower bound here, I'm going to create a new measure and I'm going to call this measure here as lower underscore bound is equals to zero and then click on confirm. And in the lower bound section here, I'm going to add the lower bound measure that we just created, which is nothing but the zero value. And then let's head to the bar section here. In the bar section, I'm going to change the color of the bars to black. And then I'm going to reduce the border size to zero. And then let's head to the markers section. There are different markers that are available here for you to choose from. I'm going to go here with the dash marker and then increase the size to maybe about eight pixels. I'm happy with how this is looking right now. And now it's time for us to conditionally change the colors of these bars. If they have achieved the targets, then I want the bars to appear in green. If they have not achieved the targets, then I want the color to appear in red. So let us see how we can do that. I'm going to create a new measure and I'm going to call this measure as bar underscore color is equals to I'm going to use an if statement here to check if my targets have met or not. Within my if statement, I'm going to perform a calculation here. So I'm going to do target minus total sales minus total sales. Divide that by my target value. And then let's wrap this within the brackets. And then let's close this bracket here. And if this is greater than zero, then I want to return red else return green and I'm going to close the bracket here. You can also change these colors into hex values of your choice. Let's do that later. For now, let's click on confirm. And now let's apply conditional formatting to our bars. Let's head over to the bars section here and click on this little FX button. It says conditional formatting and choose field value. From the field value here, I'm going to choose the bar color and then click on OK. And now you can see that the regions that have achieved our targets are appearing in green and the regions that have not achieved their targets are appearing in red. However, I don't like these dark colors here. So I'm going to change the colors here to the different hex code that I have here. And I'm going to simply copy this particular hex code and I'm going to paste my hex code here and then click on confirm. The colors are slightly darker. So what I will now do is I'll head to the bars section here. Let's head to the transparency and then increase this to about 40%. Now let's head to the next section where we will be adding our labels, data labels. So let's add the data label here. Let's call this as custom data label. In my custom data label, I would like to display the actual sales value and the percentage as well. So let's do that. So I'm going to define a variable here. And I'm going to call this variable here as total underscore sales is equals to, I'm going to refer to the total sales measure that we already have in our data set, total sales. And then on the next line, I'm going to define another variable and call this as percentage is equals to. Now we will have to calculate this particular percentage again. Now what I will do here is I'm going to call the target minus the total sales, divide that by 
the target value. Let's quickly wrap them within the brackets here. Now let's say to the next line and type in our return statement. What is it that I want to return? I want to return the total sales here and concatenate that with the percentage value that we have created and then click on confirm and let's head back into our format tab and let's head to the data label section and turn the data labels on by default you will see them like this and let's scroll down here let's choose the position to inside base so that they appear here and let's head to the value section in the value section by default we have our total sales measure here let's quickly change that into the custom label that we just created custom data label and now you can see that our data label is appearing something like this. Let's change the color here to black for now and increase the size to about 11 and let's make, the, make it bold and let's scroll down. Let's also add a background to this and change the color to white and let's drop the transparency to about 40% or so. So this is how our data label is appearing right now but this needs a little bit of formatting so let's quickly do that. First of all I would like to change the percentage here. My percentages are not appearing as percentage it is appearing as numbers so let's quickly format them. The reason why I've defined them as variables is because I can do all of my formatting in my variable here instead of doing it here. So let's quickly format this particular variable followed by a comma let me add another bracket here let me open bracket here followed by a comma open quotes 0, 0.0 and percent I need to have one decimal so that's why I'm just adding one zero here if you want to add more decimals you can simply add them here and then click on confirm and now you can see that our percentages have been formatted now a couple of more concatenations that we need to do here we need to add a space between our amount and percentage so let's quickly do that and I'm going to add open quotes here add a space I'm going to also open bracket because I want to have my percentage within the brackets and then close the quotes here followed by an ampersand and at the end here again an ampersand open quotes close the brackets close the quotes and confirm and now you can see that we have our percentages appearing within the brackets and let's also quickly format the total sales value here so that they have the thousand separator. I'm going to type in a comma here, open quotes, hash, comma, hash, hash, zero. Close the quotes, close the brackets and click on confirm. And now we have the thousand separator added as well. I'm going to create another measure here. This time I would like to change the colors of these labels as well. If they are um, green, I want to have the labels appearing in green. And if they are, if the bar is red, then I want the labels also to appear in red. You can use the same bar color measure that we have here, but I just want to use a little darker shade of red. So that's why I'm going to change this or add a new measure here. I'm going to call this as label color and I'm going to replace this with green and then red. And now let's head over to our format tab under data labels here. I can quickly go into the color section, click on this format button, conditional format button, then click on field value. And from the measures table, I can now choose the label color and then click on OK. I made a little mistake. This has to be red and then this has to be green. So let me quickly change that and then click on confirm. Now that we have changed our values here, our red labels are appearing in red, our green labels are appearing in green. I can quickly also drop the transparency here maybe to about 20% so they are clearly visible. And maybe also reduce the size to about 10 so that they are slightly smaller as well. And let's head over to our uh, Y axis and X axis here and let's turn off the title because I don't want to have the titles here on both X and Y axis. And in my custom label, I just made a little change here so that I'm only displaying the variance here to the target. So now I'm saying that in my West region, I'm short of 20% to my target. And in my East region, we are 20% above our target. So this is how you can create a bullet chart in Power BI using native visuals. I hope you now have a new chart to create in your Power BI reports and tell a different story when you want to compare two different values. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.